Hey guys, I'm Chef Tom with All Things Barbecue, and today we're smoking beef short ribs. So there's two different kinds of beef ribs that you might come across at your butcher shop or your grocery store. But what we're working with today are beef short ribs. And that's not to be confused with beef back ribs, which are very different. So as you can see here, all of the meat on these sits on top of these bones. Whereas with the beef back ribs, all of the meat's really in between. Now we have a five bone section of these beef short ribs, and it's been cut in half right here in the middle, which is great because it's going to afford us the opportunity to prepare these ribs in two different styles today. So much like pork ribs, there's a membrane on the back side of these. I'm gonna go ahead and take that papery membrane off because you can't chew on that, you can't get smoke through it. It's not quite as important with these ribs because like I said, all of the meat is sitting up on top, but it will allow us to get a little extra seasoning, a little extra smoke through the back side of these. Now I'm also looking for areas like this where there's a large amount of fat sitting on the surface. We can go ahead and get rid of that, some of that. And we don't need the excessive fat sitting on the outside because as you can see, there's tons of fat running through the ribs themselves. Now, like I said, we're gonna do these ribs in two different styles today. We're gonna do a dry style rib, we're gonna do a wet style rib, and we'll vary the seasonings with those as well. Now, both styles are gonna require a slather for us to get the rub to stick to the ribs. And in this case, we're gonna be using a little bit of this Kansas City hot sauce from Grinders. Now, you could use mustard, you could use olive oil, uh, you know, you could use whatever you want, really. The idea is just to get enough liquid on the surface to get that rub to really adhere to the meat. Of course, everyone has their preferences when it comes to seasonings, but generally speaking, when I'm doing beef ribs, I'm gonna season them similar to how I would season a brisket. We're looking for savory flavors, less sugar, and a little more bite. For my dry style rib, I'm gonna be using our butts are smoking, our beef rub. Now this has got some nice salt, pepper, garlic flavors to it, just a touch of sugar. And of course you can see that paprika And this is gonna form a really beautiful crust on our dry style rib. For my wet style rib, I'm gonna be using Plowboy's Bovine Bold. Now this is a little more classic barbecue style brisket seasoning. But we are gonna end up hitting our wet ribs with a little bit of sauce in the end. And this is gonna complement that really well. Now we can see that there's some moisture pockets forming on the surface of the rib, so we know our rub is tacked up and it's time to put these on the smoker. I've got the Yoder Smokers YS640 pellet grill. It's rolling at 250 degrees. The hopper's full of pecan and cherry pellets. Let's throw these on the rack. Now I'll throw my dry ribs back here in the back because I'm not gonna touch those for this entire cook, really. Put our wet ones right up here in the front so we can wrap these later. Our beef ribs have been on for four hours now and we're about ready to wrap our wet ribs. You see we're getting some really nice color on here. This is the one we're gonna leave open the whole time. So we'll let that one keep on riding and let's pick this guy up and wrap it in foil. Now if you wanted to add any additional flavorings at this point, you could do that. You could put some beef stock in there to braise with it, some hot sauce, some steak sauce, but I think I'm just gonna let it ride just like it is. We're just gonna wrap this nice and tight so that it can continue to sort of break itself down in there and it'll braise in its own juices. Gonna wrap this as tight as I can without puncturing the sides. And we'll get it back on the grill. So we've still got some pretty solid resistance on this. If we do take a temperature reading, 
170, 175 probably. We're not gonna be cooking to a specific temperature today. What we're really looking for is tenderness, just like we would do with a brisket, but it will be over 200 degrees when we finish. Well, we're right at five hours into this cook and our wet ribs are feeling nice and tender. Uh, wrapping those in foil really expedites that cooking process. So we're gonna pull the wet ones out, let the dry ones finish on there, and we'll rest those wet ribs before we slice into them. So you can see we've got some juice in the bottom here. That's all just rendered out of the meat as it's cooked and it continues to baste itself in that juice and in that fat that renders out. Super tender. Coming away from the bones now. And those are done. So we'll just loosely wrap them up and let them rest. All right, so after about six hours total, our dry ribs just feeling like butter when you probe them. I mean, super tender, and these guys are done. So let's set these aside, and let's check out the wet ribs. Nice. So one thing we wanna do now is just get a little bit of sauce brushed onto the top of this guy, and then we'll give it a taste. All right, I'm just gonna soak up a little of this extra fat there's plenty of it running through, so I don't think we need to leave that there. And while this is warm, I'm just gonna add a little bit of our sauce to the top to let that kind of melt into the meat. And we're using this Plowboys Casey Crossroads, really great beef barbecue sauce, not too sweet. And we'll just brush this evenly. We want a thin layer. We don't wanna overdo it with too much sauce. Oh, super tender, just going right through there. Let's check this out. Wow. You gotta love the way that that fat runs through the beef ribs and just bastes it while it cooks. So much juice in there. Let's have a taste and see how we did. Wow. It's almost falling apart, it's so tender, but you can see that you actually do get a definitive bite there. So this isn't overcooked. Now I'm not a huge sauce fan when it comes to beef stuff, but if you're gonna use one, this is the one to use because it's perfect for this flavor profile. So if you've got sauce fans in your family, this is the way to go. All right, now we've given our dry ribs some time to rest, so let's slice into these guys. All right, so you can see that layer of fat in there, and this just, man, it makes it so juicy. You don't, even when it's not wrapped, you still retain so much juice in there. The outside is a little bit crustier than that wet rib. Mm. The outside has such fantastic flavor. That crispy crust is just really good. It's super juicy, super moist. No one's gonna be mad about that. You know, we hit these two different methods today and both of them are really fantastic. For me, I'm a dry ribs guy. I love that spice, that crust, but it's totally worth checking out both of those methods. You gotta find out for yourself which one you love. You gotta do this both ways. Let us know what you think and which one is your favorite. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click the subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything else you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to thesauce.atbbq.com. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.